Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the team, um, how we founded our team, which persons you need in your team, and then also two, three words about why we have done such company, what was the opportunity behind it, uh, why I was starting in a drone business, then some words about the timeline, and then we go over to our challenging project, which we have done in St. Moritz in the winter time, um, some words about the preparation, but also some words about the show, which we have done. And of course, at the end, you can also ask questions then. Yeah, about our team. Uh, I think one of the goal is you need different skills and competence, as Christoph's already told you. We have different skills in our team. We have Stefan and Patrick, which are already more than 10 years in the DJ enterprise business. They sell these large DJ drones uh, for some special usage, which normally costs over 10,000 uh, euro or more. They are active in such business today, uh, until today. Then we have Joris, which is coming more from the sales side. He was active uh, in selling uh, events, uh, music stores, and such stuff. As I mean, has experience already in the sales uh, part. I think that's a very important uh, knowledge which you need in it, because if you just have technical people, you have drones, yeah, it's cool, it's working, but at the end, you also need to sell in some way. And there definitely makes sense to have people on board which have sales experience, especially also in the event business. Uh, then we have Red Doberci. Um, he's also active in the sales, um, more in strategic sales. He is already over 30 years uh, and built several IT company. I know uh, Rito personally signs over uh, 25 years already. And then myself, I'm responsible for all the software, network, IT topics. I'm personally coming uh, also from the software side. I was active more than 15 years in the telecom service provider uh, business, especially uh, in the innovation uh, department. Yeah, what was the motivation uh, to start a drone show? Um, yeah, it was special. Uh, the first time that I had physical contact with a drone show directly was in 2018 uh, during the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. There was this uh, Intel drone show, uh, which they have performed there. It was the first time as I saw a physical, by my own eyes, uh, a show. And that gave us the idea. I discussed with some colleagues about it, which you saw on the previous slide. Mm, is that not something which we can also introduce in Europe probably and offer that in a more reasonable price than uh, the other competitor in the US has done that. One year later, uh, we saw at the CES also the first vendor of drones. Um, that bring our idea a little bit forward and also our discussion and bring us to the point that we say, yes, we will do it. The other intention was, of course, we want to do something innovative, something new, which not everybody has already on the market, which not everybody can offer it. And an additional reason for it was the dry period, especially in 2018 in the summertime, we had a longer dry period here uh, in Switzerland, almost everywhere in Europe. Uh, which got a fire, uh, fire burn more or less everywhere, which mean more or less all the fireworks has to cancel. And that was also another reason that I was coming in such discussion to find alternatives to have something in the air without directly fire involved, which or can also be performed if there is a dry period or a fire burn uh, in place. Yeah, some words about the timeline. Uh, it was around June 2019 as we had the founder team ready and found them together with Swiss Drone Show uh, HE in August 2019 and organized then our first 50 drones. It was quite challenging, of course. We dealt with uh, the software, with the Christophs teams, but as well with the hardware. And then we also organized the whole air shipment that we have for drones here in Switzerland to start our business. Then in September, we have the great opportunity to get Christoph as a trainer. If you have the chance to select a trainer, probably can take Christoph as well. It was a really good training and a good experience. Christoph was uh, three days three day in Switzerland on our uh, test environment. I think that's also an important point. Um, you need some fields or some area uh, where you have space to test the drone, your shows. We have the great opportunity that we have uh, such location here and here from our headquarter available in Switzerland. Yeah, after this initial three-day training, we was more or less fit to know how the softwares work, but we don't have much experience already to perform multiple shows. Then we have done multiple internal hard training, but we also optimized the whole process to, to stack the drones faster in the field, optimize the hardware to build up the infrastructure in a faster way. We have done several optimization that time. 
At the end, in November, we, we sold our first show with around 100 drones. Uh, for that, we ordered additional drones, additional 60 drones, and also special batteries, to which I come uh, later in the slides to it. And then on the 1st of January, you will see on the uh, next slides, we performed our first bigger public show uh, to be working in the right way in St. Moritz in the winter time with around 100 drones. Yeah, you see here one screenshot, you will also find on our homepage uh, or as well on the ECS homepage, a video of the whole show. Um, what was the main challenge of the show itself? Um, one thing, of course, is the show design itself, um, where primary Patrick from our team was active. First of all, we have to roll together with the customer a show concept that was just on a paper uh, roll, which elements we want to put it in it. And we have done the first 2D visualization in some kind of uh, video already done in Blender on the first corrections and then we was going over into the video visualization. It was a quite challenging process to be done in such short time, but it's definitely possible. I think the big challenge is uh, to bring the customer the opportunity of this 3D visualization which you have with drones over, that they not think as a simple fireworks or a simple two-dimensional uh, two show, that they also think in a 3D visualization. And there, I think the experience, especially from you as a company, asked uh, to guide them a little bit uh, to bring the right uh, objects also in the air. At the end, we defined as well the music tracks and that that's matching um, at the end also with the drone show. And of course, we have uh, performed some short tests of the show that have been done uh, on our test environment because if you do at the final positions with LED on, it's probably not so the nicest situation where the customer will be happy about it. Then a second challenge um, that was special due to the situation. Uh, here you see a map and the show was performing over a lake, it was around one kilometer away from the starting position. We had uh, two challenges there. Uh, at the starting positions, we had the distance to the visitor was around 50 to 100 meters. That was one reason. The second is there was a public airport uh, near from the show location. And due to that reason, we need uh, some permissions from uh, the Federal Office of Civil Organization, the local uh, government. That was quite challenging, but was uh, well understandable. At the end, uh, they need a lot of security papers. It was around 100 <laughs> pages paper at the end. But uh, after two months, we get this permission as well. And the great thing is, when you have done this paper one time, the most of these 100 pages you can reuse uh, for the next time as well, if you need some special permission. It's not in all cases needed. It's really depend on the law in each country and the situation. What we also have done is a detailed planning, uh, especially also together with the customer. One is where the show is performing, and then the flight uh, path to it, but as well at the start location. Uh, you need some infrastructure there, you need some uh, barriers there. Uh, we need to close some uh, streets because this was a street between the lake and the starting uh, location, which we had to close temporarily to take off. All the stuff we needed to coordinate with the customer or on your side. I think uh, that's also important to know. Then, uh, yeah, we had some challenging locations or situation in St. Moritz because in the winter there could be around minus 20 degrees. Uh, the good message, it's work, although it's got the risk, but it's challenging. Um, it's probably not the best location for the first show which you perform, but you see here this nice picture, that's uh, the RTK GPS receiver. Uh, it's still working, by the way. Um, you see there's already ice on it, but it's still uh, working, uh, precision. But you need to prepare the material. What is the biggest challenge, of course, if you have a show in colder temperature, is the batteries, because normal batteries are running around six to seven minutes in such conditions. According to our tests, we have done uh, with some third party manufacturers, created some special optimized battery for cold temperature, which uh, are running 20 minutes in such cold temperature. Uh, so awesome. Mark, if I make a jump in here. Yeah, uh, of course. What, what was the temperature, um, their temperature when you did your show in St. Moritz? Uh, it was around minus 15 at the end. Wow. Uh, Planet was the show uh, that we can run on the minus 20, but was around minus 15 grad degrees um, as we performed the show. And also an important topic, uh, it's quite uh, in these challenging locations important, is the icing topic. Uh, when the humidity is going up, you could have ice and on the propellers of the drone. And what's very important to know it, 
when you just measure temperature and also the humidity just on the ground, it's not the same as you have in the air, mean on 50 or 100 meter uh, above the ground. It's important that you either measure it or you work together with some uh, weather forecast services for special for uh, airspace, which you can normally also provide such information. Because if the humidity is too high, you see on this picture, it's not so clean, but you see there is ice on the propeller and yeah, that's will not end in a good scenario. Uh, also, I think one of, one of the really interesting things what you did is that you did the uh, the whole flight over over the water. So maybe you exactly. can kind of elaborate a bit of why did you exactly choose uh, that uh, that spot to perform the show? Yeah, of course. Um, you see here the graphic um, on the picture. You see the whole situation. The reason for that was multiple. The, the visitors or the hotels are in the upper area here. And we cannot perform the show over the visitors itself and the regular rotation reasons. And that was the reason why we come to the lake. The challenge of it, of course, the, the lake was frozen in the winter, but it, it cannot, was not allowed to stand on it because the, the ice was not that thick enough. But the big challenge, of course, was this one kilometer distance between the start location and the show location. One of that is the flight time. You need to calculate it in some four five minutes for that and as well the wi-fi connection uh, to the drones you need there some uh, special wi-fi antennas which have enough capacity uh, that you can still control the drones so uh, and regarding wi-fi um did you have the wi so you said there's like a one kilometer distance between the yeah. place where you took off and the place where the show happened so uh did you have simply wi-fi in the one kilometer distance or did you have some kind of wi-fi uh, additional access points closer to the uh, exact show location um at this situation where we have done all access point on the start location but we used some kind of beam access point uh which focus uh, their waves in the direction of the show location so we think like, it, a, like a directional antenna. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We think about the pot antennas on site, but to the fact that the ice was not thick enough to go on it, there was no simple option to come over. Uh, but the performance was enough. Uh, with the right access points from the and, and, and maybe also uh, one really interesting thing you mentioned is the cold weather batteries. Maybe you can yeah. tell a bit more about those. So what's so special about them and how, like, did, did you find some manufacturer who can make them? Were they already ready made or did they make them specifically for that show? So how did that happen? Yeah, we have, we have worked together with the LiPo manufacturer. Um, this battery was specific for us designed. It's not a standard product uh, together with us. Uh, we have optimized the chemicals inside the batteries um, that the temperature is not go so low. Of course, you still need to load them immediately before the show is starting, but together with the special chemical um, which we have put it in it, together with the manufacturer, we was able um, to get around 15. This chemical is some kind of heating up the battery a little bit and that it's to perform longer in this cold temperature. It's not a standard product which you can just uh, purchase, uh, but if someone have interest, yeah, you can contact us and we can look forward there as well. That is really interesting. And uh, also, um, I, I assume that uh, you probably used two sets of batteries. So you used one set when you did all the pre-flight yeah. uh, checks to make sure that everything is ready for the show. And then before the actual show, you can swap the batteries for the live uh, show batteries. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. Uh, probably on that slide you see already uh, we have a lot of charting stations. Also that process we optimized. We have one set to prepare everything and then we prepare these special iced batteries um, some minutes before the show is starting with the higher capacity and put them in all the drones. Uh, there we have done a lot of optimization. Um, yeah, of course, then the on-site itself, um, transportation, it's a lot of material you see here. Um, that's the material more or less for 100 drones and all the equipment, but it's handable. But as well here, we have done some optimization to have them faster on the field, have the hardware faster installed. And so you see here as well, we have done uh, a special rack with all the equipment in it, which yeah, give you the opportunity that you're faster because we have done some tests and in the night we have to move it away all the material again and in the morning again to the field. Of course, before you can run the whole show on site, we always do some tests. I think that's very important. First with one drone, then with two, then with four, then we was going to up to eight, 50, and then at the end we have also done a test with the LEDs off with 100 drones. 
but I think that's also a very important step before you perform the final show because normally you just have one chance. <laughs> yeah, and at the end, on the 1st of January, we have run the show. Um, the feedback from the customer, they was very, very happy. Um, there was also in the bigger Swiss news magazine in it, but they also got a lot of reactions over social media. There was a lot of feedbacks on their own uh, social media channels, but also as well, uh, a lot of Instagram stories was ongoing. Uh, they was really, really happy about uh, the show and they already rebooked for uh, this no next year now uh, as well for in January 21 we'll perform the show again uh, of course with some new animations and some uh, new stuff in it yeah and suppose now after having done that there's probably uh, you know plenty of ski resorts around where you're from so now once you have this knowledge you can probably quickly repeat uh, similar shows in 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 those areas definitely definitely also I mean uh, especially in the winter time uh, Fireworks, it's not no longer the big topic. It's a big, it's a cool thing to have a drone show. Also, special the visualization you see here on the screenshot. The picture is probably not the best. We have some better, but I don't find it right now. That's the logo of Sunk Morix. You have completely new uh, possibility to visualize things in the air, which you never had with fireworks or other stuff. And I think that's give completely new opportunity, special also for touristic uh, locations like Sunk Morix. Yeah, definitely. But, and, and, and I think for probably environmental purposes as well, you mentioned fireworks there. And um, so if, if I can maybe mention that, um, so last year in uh, in December, I, I had, we we're doing the show in Australia, in Melbourne. And yeah. as, as some of you might know, then they, they had this, you know, huge disaster of the Australian bushfires. And even with that, then, you know, once the new year came around, they had the fireworks display in, in Sydney which is one of the biggest ones in the world. And even then, like a lot of people were complaining, you know, we have all the smoke around us. So what, why, are, why are we still launching the fireworks and, you know, making more smoke in the air? So I think definitely drone shows is one of the areas that uh, can kind of move uh, forward uh, the world in, in this direction. And maybe, you know, hopefully in the future transition many places to um, either using a combination of both or maybe even switching to simply these light shows. Definitely. We also surprised we got a lot of positive feedback from pet holders uh, because yeah, the fireworks have this uh, noise and with drone shows, you don't have it. They was quite happy about the drone show comparing to the fireworks. Yeah, as a, as a dog owner myself, then also I'm kind of, uh, I, I would be quite excited that uh, the fireworks would be, you know, replaced with drone shows. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to have a quick overview about our project. Um, if you have additional questions, are we also open for cooperation in the Western European market? If you're interested, feel free to step in contact with us. Um, and you can share the contact data as well later. Yeah, so thank you, Mark, so much for um, sharing your experience on, on doing the shows. We'll definitely share your contact as well. Uh, I assume maybe someone will be also interested in, let's say, the cold weather batteries. I guess that's depending on uh, where they're from exactly. So I think it's, it's really good to see some like real world experience and what did it take to launch a show like that. So thank yeah. you.